Joe Scarborough from MSNBC's Morning Joe was furious with Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump continuing to compare himself to the recently killed Russian dissident Alexei Navalny. Continues to make the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny about himself. But not about the man who killed him. Not, not about Vladimir Putin. He refuses still to condemn Vladimir Putin. Who poisoned him uh, once and, and it didn't work. Um, and finally he killed him. In a recorded town hall that aired on Fox News last night, Trump was asked about the money he now owes after being found liable for a massive fraud in New York State. And he said that was a, quote, form of Navalny. Trump did call the opposition leader, quote, very brave while answering a separate question, but again failed to condemn Russian President Vladimir Putin, who most believe to be behind Navalny's death. Take a look. Even if, if you appeal, you've got to put up escrow money. That's uh, uh, it's a lot it of dough. It is a dough. form of Navalny. It is a form of uh, communism or fascism. Navalny is a very sad situation and he's br very brave. He was a very brave guy. It's a horrible thing, but it's happening in our country too. Uh, we are turning into a communist country in many ways. And if you look at it, I'm the leading candidate. I get indicted. I never heard of being indicted before. That, it's, such, it's, a such a it's such a lie. It's such disgusting. It's such a lie on every single level. A form of Navalny, communism. A guy that lies to banks, a guy that lies to creditors, a guy that lies to everybody about his property holdings. Listen, that that would get any of us thrown in jail. That would get you thrown in jail if you did that. Or that would get you, if not thrown in jail, that would get you fined. Uh, and, and so he's been doing this for decades. People in Manhattan have been saying he's been doing this for decades. And so finally, if there is a form of sort of Putinism in America, uh, which of course is so funny, he didn't say Putinism. He didn't bring up Vladimir Putin. But the, I think the most un-American thing that's happened to Donald Trump through the decades is he always gets away with it. He is Rolo Tomasi, if you saw LA Confidential. He's the guy that always gets away with it. And we don't know, maybe he's gonna get away with it again. Maybe that's, well, we know that's what this run for the presidency is. We said it in 2019. I said it in 2019. I said, if Donald Trump loses, he's going to run again. And he's going to run again if for no other reason to avoid all of the criminal actions that are going to be coming against him. The ones that we saw even before January 6th. Communism. Like, I just wonder, I wonder, are the people in the, that crowd, and I think we have to start asking this of our fellow Americans, are the people in that crowd really stupid enough to believe that if justice finally comes to one shyster, I that that somehow condemns America and makes it a, quote, communist nation when actually American capitalism is stronger today than ever before. Let me just say that again. I don't want to believe American that. capitalism is stronger than ever before. We are crushing Chinese communism. I know there are really stupid people in Congress. They go, ah, these communists, communists. They throw that word around having absolutely no idea what that means, no idea what Marxism means. They just like, anybody they're opposed to is either a pedophile or a Marxist. That shows you Again, how bankrupt intellectually, how bankrupt philosophically, how bankrupt spiritually the Republican Party is. They attack our military. They say it's weak. They say it's pathetic. When our men and women in uniform are stronger now relative to the rest of the world than any time since the end of World War II. And American capitalism blowing away not only our allies, but also all of our rivals. I just got to keep saying it. Donald Trump wants, Donald Trump loves Russia so much he should move there. 
If you move there, he'd hate it. Tucker Carlson, why don't you move there? If you love Russia, if it's so great, if it's a land of paradise, I mean, these are the lies. This is the BS we used to hear from Soviet leaders coming to the United States and talking on Larry King about what a worker's paradise. Go to the worker's paradise. Has a lower GDP than the state of Texas. California, this place that everybody says is the worst place. Oh, it's so horrible. California, communist state. California has the fourth largest GDP in the world. In the world. In the world. In the world. I want to bring in Ireland in a second, but I want to go to Caddy K. Caddy, when you have these idiot Republicans talking about how weak America's military is, how weak America's economy is, how Americans are, Americans are communists, I think of my limited time going across the world, talking to leaders in the Middle East, talking to the leaders in Europe, talking to leaders around the world. I will tell you over the past several years, I've not had one say, you know what the problem is with America? You all are too weak. <laughs> no, what they say is, you're trouncing us economically, you're trouncing us militarily, and we don't appreciate it. They say it in different words, sometimes much harsher. I can't even repeat what what one leader of, of, of a major European country said to me about what the United States was doing to them, but it was colorful. And it was about our strong economy. We're rolling over the rest of the world, and instead of celebrating America's strength, Republicans are attacking it. Yeah, I mean, look, you and I have had this conversation many times, Joe. Look at the state of the U.S. economy at the moment compared to all other industrialized economies in the world. And it's not just the state of communist California that's doing so well. It is the United States writ large. Uh, growth is higher. Inflation is lower. Unemployment is lower. This, you know, it's it's uh, in, in global terms. This is a rocket ship. You read it. I read it, too. Jared Baker's um, article about the state of Russia and the state of the United States saying how absurd it is to compare Russia to the United States at the moment. He makes a very funny comment at the beginning in a kind of spoof saying, yeah, that's because there are so many immigrants queuing up to get into Russia at the moment. At least they don't have an immigration right. problem because millions of people are not trying to get there. Where do people want to send their kids to university? It's here in the United States. Where do people want to come into this country to work? It's here in the United States. None of that is true of Russia. I mean, it's just, it's... It, Joe Biden for you may not like Joe Biden if you're a Republican you may not like the expansion of government you may not like the Chips Act you may not like the Inflation Reduction Act you may not like the spending that has gone on during this administration if you are a fiscal conservative you may have concerns about it but to say that you know Joe Biden locks up his political enemies or if you're a journalist you get thrown into jail if you report critical things of this administration or uh, that there's any that the Justice Department is warped one way or the other it's it's ridiculous I mean, there's there is clearly no it's comparison. Insanity. Yeah, it's absolute insanity. The thing is, even if you're a small government conservative, you can't be rooting for Donald Trump to come in because Donald Trump in four years raised the national debt right. more than any other a president in American president. history. Yeah. Any more than any president in American history, even two term Democratic presidents didn't raise the national debt more than Donald Trump did in one four-year term. But if you're a Republican voter looking at the Republicans in Congress right now, they're the ones holding up aid to Ukraine. Right. Aid to Ukraine. And Israel. To ward off Russian aggression. And you would think that would help ward off Russian aggression while Donald Trump is Russian aggression well, in the form of a useful idiot. Well, you, you, you've got money going to Israel to help them in their fight against Hamas. You've got money going to Gaza to help with the humanitarian crisis. You've got money going to Russia or, or to Ukraine to help in their fight against Russia. And you've got money going to Taiwan to help in their fight against communist China. And it's the House Republicans. Yeah. It's the House Republicans that are standing with, it's Mike Johnson who is standing in the way of us helping our allies in Ukraine, in Israel, uh, and, and, well, he and, could and, be and, and in Taiwan. He could be a hero if he wanted, but that's no, not what they do No, he doesn't do want to do that. In a bold and controversial move that has sparked widespread condemnation, former President Donald Trump stunned audiences by doubling down on likening his criminal indictments to the tragic circumstances of Russian dissident Alexei Navalny, during a pre-taped town hall appearance on Fox News Channel in Greenville, South Carolina. 
The event saw Trump express solidarity with Navalny's bravery before segueing into a comparison with his own legal troubles. Citing a perceived politicization of prosecutions as evidence of America's purported shift towards communism. Navalny is a very sad situation and he's very brave, he was a very brave guy, Trump remarked during the town hall hosted by Laura Ingraham, and it's a horrible thing. But it's happening in our country, too. Trump's assertions linking his legal challenges to perceptions of political oppression have drawn sharp criticism. Notably amidst his recent loss in a civil fraud trial resulting in a substantial $355 million penalty, inflating to $454 million with interest. Drawing parallels between Navalny's fate and his legal battles, Trump's rhetoric escalated, characterizing the indictments and unfavorable court rulings as reminiscent of totalitarian regimes. Despite facing substantial financial liabilities, Trump's defiance remained steadfast, with vague responses regarding potential legal obligations amidst ongoing appeals, evading direct answers when pressed on the possibility of extensive financial repercussions. Trump's tacit support for Russian President Vladimir Putin and his failure to denounce Russian aggression in Ukraine contrasted with House Republicans' stance, suggesting a growing acceptance of Russian expansionism within the GOP. The former president's contentions surrounding his legal woes as purported symbolisms of oppressive regimes have added layers of controversy to an already contentious political landscape. As the town hall concluded, Trump's evasion of condemning Putin and his reluctance to disavow Russian interference in U.S. elections underscored persistent divisions in American politics, with lingering echoes of Trump's affinity for Putin's leadership style. With the specter of his upcoming Republican presidential primary clash with Nikki Haley in South Carolina looming, Trump's unapologetic rhetoric risks further polarization among voters already grappling with deep-seated ideological rifts. How do Trump's comparisons between his legal challenges and political oppression impact public perceptions of democratic values and the rule of law in the United States? In what ways might Trump's controversial statements about Navalny and American democracy influence the discourse around human rights, political freedoms, and foreign policy in the upcoming election cycle? Please let us know what you think in the comments and as always please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content.